Hello my sweet friends and welcome to DIY with Nadia. If you ever asked yourself, how do I reuse a thrift store frame or an old picture frame? Well, I have some ideas for you today, so let's get started. For this project, I'm going to be using this beautiful thrifted frame. The first thing I'm going to do is of course, take out everything on the inside, clean the glass and the frame, and then we're going to get started. While for some of you, this frame is absolutely stunning, it does have a little bit of cheapness to it, and it would be something that you might not wanna change. But for me, I wanted to bring out the white in a different way. I wanted to paint it blue, and then we're going to use my favorite method, which is dry brushing, to bring out the beauty of this frame. Next, I grabbed an 8 by 11 piece of paper from the printer, and I'm just going to trace out how much I need to cover that glass. I'm going to cut it out and then tape it to the glass. What this is going to do is it's going to make my scarf that I'm using for this project a little bit brighter. You will see what I mean as I'm doing this. To tape the paper in place, I'm just using some clear masking tape and I'm going to put it on two sides of the paper and that'll be fine and it will hold it in place. So here's the scarf that I found at the Dollar Tree. I just absolutely fell in love with it. It has the red truck, it has Home of the Brave. It's just so patriotic and beautiful. Now, if you can look in the center and see, you could tell where my scarf is laying down against the white paper versus my desk. You can see the difference in brightness of the background of the scarf. So that is why I did that. I highly recommend that you always do that when using scarves. And this is kind of like the same technique when we're doing decoupage with napkins. We wanna make sure that the background is bright so that whatever print we're going to use is going to be as bright and as beautiful as possible. So that's why I did that paper. Once I found where I want my design to be, I just flipped it over and I'm using some packing tape to tape the scarf in place in the back. And look how beautiful it is. Now for the dry brushing. The first thing you need is the shabbiest brush you can get. And the nice thing about it is they don't cost a lot because they're shabby. So that's the best part. And I literally take a tiny, tiny dab of paint on it just like you see. And this is chalk paint. And then dab off the initial paint on the napkin. And then I'm starting the dry brushing process. And it's so fun. You just go with the grain back and forth, back and forth, and just wait for the details of that beautiful frame to come out. I'm one of those people that every frame has its own beauty, and this one doesn't have any Victorian kind of like swooshes and swirls, but to me, this frame is so beautiful with its own little elegance and characters. Next, I'm going to grab some raffia that I had on hand, and then also a gift bow, and this is a burlap gift bow. And I wanted to kind of make it look like firework or something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that raffia up into pieces, kind of like, just like they're folded. I'm going to cut on those ends. And I'm going to hot glue them straight to the back of the bow and kind of make it look like the red is kind of flying out behind the little flower. Next, I'm grabbing my scissors and just rounding everything off so it's nice and clean, but also still shabby. We are going to take that little gemstone in the middle of the flower and remove it. And instead of that, I'm going to grab this. It's called foam scatter, but I do call it vase filler because it's made out of the same stuff. What you might want to do with the white stars is grab a clean paintbrush and just kind of brush off any of that sparkle from, from the blue and red because it kind of looks almost dirty when it's alone and without the red and the blue. So that's what I did there. And now I'm just cutting off just a little bit on the other side of the star so it's a little flatter, getting some hot glue on there and just hot gluing it to the center of the flower. Next, I'm putting my 4th of July design into the picture frame, locking it in, and then hot gluing my 4th of July flower to the top right of the picture frame.
Today's video is part of a collaboration with my dear friend Catherine from A Perfect Place to Start. She hosts Thrifted Thursday every Thursday with a different YouTuber and these are so much fun to watch. On her channel you can find the best thrift hauls you have ever seen and she also does a lot of other budget-friendly DIYs. You will absolutely love her and love her beautiful farmhouse style. I will link her channel down below so please visit her and show her some love. When I thrifted this piece for under a dollar, I was not sure what I wanted to do, but what I was sure of is I was not going to destroy that beautiful bamboo painting in the back. Right now it looks dingy, but I promise you half of it is just a dirty, dirty glass. So what I decided to do is enhance the frame and bring that picture into the frame. That lady is sitting in a garden. So in my head, I envisioned the garden kind of coming out into the picture frame. And that is why I decided to do what I did with the frame. I think it's important to remember that not all thrifted items need to be kind of, you know, DIY'd and worked on. Some of them just need a little bit of extra love and preservation. And this is one of them. Here I am very, very carefully removing that bamboo painting and a look at how gorgeous it is and in such beautiful condition and of course here you can see the dingy dingy glass that it was sitting behind so now i'm going to clean the glass put it aside and we're going to work on the frame and yes of course my first step with the frame was to clean it next i'm getting these faux moss stones and these go a long way Depending on how big your frame is, you're going to need two to three packs of these. My frame from the outside measurements is 14 by 18 inches, just so you kind of know how much you're going to need. I ended up using two and a half packs. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm taking these faux stones and a very, very sharp knife, and I'm very carefully cutting them in half. The stones that I'm using are from the Dollar Tree from the craft area and I was lucky enough to find a few packs because these are usually gone. And then the next thing I'm doing is just mixing some black paint with some green acrylic paint and I'm just going to cover the frame as much as I can. I just wanted that black to be gone. I'm not going for a perfect paint job. This is supposed to look like kind of like moss, kind of like jungle, kind of like a garden. So it, I wasn't going for some perfection over here because I am going to cover and I'm going to put the stones fairly close to each other. After the frame had some time to dry, I'm just starting to hot glue the stones and I'm keeping them fairly tight and uh, just as close as I can get to each other and then just repeating the process all the way around the frame. Now I'm just putting the glass back in then very carefully putting my bamboo painting in and then the last uh, cardboard piece and I'm just locking everything in place and we are all done. What do you think? When I saw this picture frame, I knew exactly what I was going to do with it. Whether we like it or not, times have changed and Wi-Fi is everywhere. And when you have guests in your home, they always ask, what's your Wi-Fi? And I'm usually the one who doesn't know. My husband does because it's automatic on my phone and my laptop and my tablet. So what I decided to do is grab this frame give it a bit of a rub down because I did want it to be black. I'm going to print on a white piece of paper so I wanted the frame to kind of stand out so I decided to paint my frame with a Craftsmart 
black acrylic paint. While my frame is drying, I'm going to have some fun. Now, this is Pick Monkey, but you can use anything you want. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but this is what I usually use. And uh, I use this in my, all my work. I can use this to make t-shirts. I use this to uh, make thumbnails. I do this. You can pretty much do this anywhere. You can do this in Word and Google. You can do this anywhere. I use this on daily basis. But anyway, so all I'm doing is I'm writing Be Our Guest. Then I'm writing Wi-Fi network and password. But the biggest thing I can recommend is make sure that your Wi-Fi network and password is a different font from your actual network name and password. So it stands out, so it looks different. And of course, be our guest, you can use a pretty font or I'm using a fairly standard clean font so it stands out, but you can do anything you want. Now that my frame is dry, I printed out my little sheet and I'm going to put it in the frame. But the only thing that I didn't record is I quickly just put a little stamp on all the corners just to give it a little color. You'll see what I mean when I put the picture up. But that's really it. You just put it together and you're all done. It's a very simple and easy project, but it's something that's kind of needed in our homes these days.